always serving a fresh cup of daily inspiration, Deanna Hobbs. Today's inspiration is to remind you that you are the one. Welcome to your daily cup of inspiration podcast. My name is Deanna Hobbs, founder of Empowering Everyday Women Ministries, where my team and I fuel your faith every single day. I believe his hand is truly upon your life and you are here not by chance, but the Lord has brought you here to listen to what he has to say today. I'm just so blessed that you are here. I believe you are favored of the Lord. And these inspirations that you hear Monday through Friday, they are available to you as a free resource. You can download them on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher.com. You can also head on over to YouTube under the Deanna Hobbs channel and subscribe and you'll get notifications whenever a new podcast is ready there. You can visit DeannaHobbs.com. They're available on my personal website as well as other media outlets. We just want to saturate the internet and and make sure that you have access to these rich words from the Lord. Before we get started, I want to say a prayer that God will be with us today. God, thank you for this time of sharing. Thank you for caring about us. You know our needs and our hurts, our pains, our issues. Whatever we have come to this podcast with today, we lay it at your feet and ask that you minister to those places through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. You know what? I was always different. As a young girl, while friends and family members were outdoors playing, you know what I'd be doing? I'd be curled up with a book. I preferred solitude. Still do. I enjoy quiet time, and I'm not one to be the life of the party when lots of folks are around. I'm more of the observant type in unfamiliar surroundings, like a voluntary wallflower. And by that, I mean, I don't mind being separated from the crowd, blending into the paint and fading into the shadows. It's more comfortable for me that way, actually. I remember how bothered I used to be, though, when others misunderstood my reserved nature. Some people accused me of acting funny, antisocial, prideful and arrogant. And those things don't describe me at all. I deeply love people. I care about their feelings. So before I matured a bit, I was so troubled by these misconceptions. Some people, even those who went to church with me and saw me regularly, would tell me how stuck up acting and mean I was. They just didn't understand me. That's all. I wanted people to see my true intentions and see my heart, but I didn't know how to make them. Back then, there was just no way they could know that being sexually molested by a neighbor at a really young age caused me to go inside a shell. For a season of my life, I didn't even know how affected I was by sexual abuse. They didn't realize, nor did I, that big crowds made me anxious and I felt safer being anonymous and blending in. They weren't aware of the fact that after that horrific thing happened to me, I equated attention with danger. Despite how hurtful the criticism was, was and how much it stung, I did my best to let it roll off my shoulders. I kept on spending my quiet time reading books, the Bible, and writing letters to God in my journal. That was my thing. Writing was the way I got my feelings out. Little did I know, God was going to use this Deanna Hobbs, an introverted girl who had been sexually abused and emotionally traumatized behind it, to speak for him, write for him, and share his love with others around the world. God sure has a funny way of bringing his purpose to pass, doesn't he? Though he didn't cause this sexual abuse, he did use my resulting introversion for his glory. Had I not spent all that time alone, combing over the pages of scripture and learning how to get my thoughts out in cohesive written form, I wouldn't have been prepared for my ultimate calling in life. I believe that what I was doing back then was preparing me for what I'm doing now. God knew that even though others didn't understand me, he was going to use me to do great things for his kingdom and he's going to use you too. That's so important for you to know and you can't let people's opinions and misunderstanding of you get the best of you. God loves you. He approves of you. He knows your character and how your life experiences have affected you. So don't worry about the perceptions or the misperceptions of others. I was sharing something really important with you in this week's vlog. Right at the end of our family video, I was getting ready to say goodbye 
goodbye. But then God led me to share a special message that falls perfectly in line with today's podcast. I don't have time to reiterate it here, but if you just go to my YouTube channel under Deanna Hobbs and click on the video titled, I Had to Tell You This, you'll hear what it was. Listen carefully to that message. But anyway, back to what I was saying. God is going to use you. Even if others don't approve of you, this makes me think about King David. Do you remember 1 Samuel 16 when God sent the prophet Samuel to choose Israel's next king after King Saul disobeyed God in 1 Samuel 15? Well, Samuel, in obedience to the Lord, headed on to Bethlehem to choose a successor from among the eight sons of a man named Jesse. However, God didn't reveal the person's identity right away. He didn't tell the prophet who the successor would be. The Bible says when Samuel saw Jesse's son, his name was Eliab, he took one look at him and said, surely this is the Lord's anointed. But quickly, God corrected Samuel. He told him, don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. As you can clearly see, even those who walk closely with God and hear from him regularly can be deceived by what they see. The person God had chosen to reign in Saul's stead wasn't even considered worthy by his natural father, Jesse. His name was David, and his heavenly father saw in him what others could not see. David was the anointed one chosen for that season. He had been out in the field tending sheep and goats, not even realizing that God was preparing him to be a king. When David appeared before Saul, the Lord said, this is the one anoint him. Friend, God wants you to know you are the one. You are the one he has anointed. You are the one he has favored. You are the one he has singled out. You are the one through whom he will receive glory. He's chosen you to be blessed. It doesn't matter what your situation looks like. It doesn't even matter how others perceive you. When God has chosen you, no one can stop his plan for your life. Sometimes you won't even look at yourself the right way because of things that have happened to you in your life or circumstances, you don't even view yourself as worthy. You don't even see yourself as somebody that God would choose, but it's not up to us. It's not up to people who look at us. It is up to God. And so you have to know that you're equipped, you're empowered and enabled to walk in destiny. You have been both anointed and appointed by God. So don't you let opposition, the opinion of others, and most certainly not a low opinion of yourself, prevent you from believing God to do great things for in and through you. He's sending Deanna Hobbs through a podcast who was sexually abused and felt like I would never be used and was too scared to hardly look at a crowd. God took me, picked me up, set me free, and now he's using me. And I'm telling you that he's going to use you too. So the next time negative circumstances all around you say you're defeated, forgotten, and less than, remember that the one who is greater than your circumstances has chosen you. The one who is greater than your past has chosen in you. The one who is greater than your mistakes has chosen you. The one who is greater than your obstacles has chosen you. The one who is greater than your hindrances has chosen you. And that makes all the difference. You are his beloved, a vessel of honor created in his image, crowned with his glory and endowed with divine power. To remind you that you are special and chosen by the Father, I'm stirring First Peter 2 and 9 in the New International Version into your cup of inspiration, which says, but you are a chosen in people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. As you drink down the contents of your cup, know who you are. You are an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ, according to Romans 8, 17. You are royalty, a child of the king. Embrace what God says about you. Adopt his views. Speak his word. See yourself through his eyes. Even if, like David, you have been counted out by those closest to you. God has already counted you in and his glory will be revealed in your life. I'm a witness. Now let's pray.
God, I pray for this, my sister, this, my brother. Thank you for choosing and anointing them for great things. In times when they feel inferior, small, incapable, and overlooked, please remind them that your word calls them blessed. Your word calls them loved. Your word calls them favored and chosen. Today, help them accept what your word says about them and reject everything that comes to refute it. We praise you in advance for their breakthrough, O oh God. And I declare by faith that it is already done. In Jesus' name, amen. Your Daily Cup of Inspiration podcast has been brought to you by Empowering Everyday Women Ministries, where we help fuel your faith every day. For more information, log on to www.deannahobbs.com.